What's happening, everybody? Welcome, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Jeremy here with Andrew. Today, we're talking about social media pros and cons, specifically as it relates to martial arts, martial arts schools, martial arts businesses beyond schools, martial artists as individuals. We're going to talk about all that and probably some more. Stick around. Thanks for being here. If you happen to be new to what we do at Whistlecake, well, our mission is to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world, no matter what you do, no matter where you're doing it. You, we, we feel just as strongly about supporting the Taekwondo practitioner in Djibouti as we do the karate practitioner in Uruguay as the BJJ practitioner in... Kathmandu. I, I was going to actually pull like a U.S. Oh. Uh, in, in um, what's a ridiculous, in, in Intercourse, Pennsylvania, USA. Sure. I, okay. I, 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 I went, I went, I went ridiculous. It had to be done. It's a real, it's a real town, by the way. And I've completely just lost my train of thought. If you want to know more about the things that we do and why we're so passionate about this, whistlekick.com is the place for you to go. We've got a lot of great stuff that we work on. It's what we do is more than martial arts radio. We have put on a number of events. We put out books. We have social media. We offer consulting services. We are a broad company with quite a few people working on a lot of really cool different stuff. Whistlekick.com is going to connect you to all of those things, right? Connect, connect, educate. Enter day. We've got a store. We make things like shirts and pants and protective equipment and training programs and lots more. So you can find out more about that stuff over there and use the code podcast15 to save 15% on what we're doing there. And my shirt, it's, you know, you might look at my shirt and say, Jeremy, this shirt doesn't sit right. Well, it's because my arms are huge. It's because really, you're jacked. It's because I'm jacked. It's really what's yeah. happening. Uh, and if you're listening versus watching, well, you're missing out on the jackedness of my <laughs> arms in this shirt. I should probably just cut this off. They are, they're just a little bit too short for my arms. I, I put on some muscle this summer. It's, what can I say? Uh, if your I, shirt doesn't fit well in the arms because your arms are jacked, my belly must be jacked too. You have a very jacked belly. It's <laughs> um, interesting, interesting, unrelated to anything else. It has been expressed to me by people who know things, mm -hmm. that physiologically, health-wise, et cetera, we should have a little bit of a belly. I'm just that, ahead of the curve. You, you, you may have a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah. But if, if you look at primates in the wild, right? Like, they're not shredded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, healthy, our, our historical definition of healthy carries a, a, a little bit of body fat. Yeah, yeah. But we digress, <laughs> we, as we always do, because it's fun, because we're friends, because, you know, yeah. hey, um, well. That's, that's the entertain part. Right. We got to do all those things. Yep. If you want to support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain, if you believe, as we do, that getting everyone in the world to train for just six months would make the world a dramatically better place, please consider supporting us by buying something, coming to an event, sharing this episode with someone, or perhaps you want to support our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick for $5 a month. You're going to get bonus audio, $10 bonus video content. We give you book drafts at $25 uh, at $50 and $100. You get all kinds of other stuff. And, and those, those rewards stack. There's merch involved. And if you want to go the opposite direction, $2 a month still helps. We have a bunch of people to do that. And what are we going to give you at that tier? At the very least, and sometimes we give bonus stuff, in fact, often I give bonus stuff, you're going to know who is coming up on the show and what episodes we've already recorded. So if you like that peek behind the curtain, well, that's what we do for you, two bucks. How many people out there do you think still love social media? <sighs> my, my first initial gut answer was going to be the people that use it. But the more I thought about it just now. We like, both use no, it. Do you love it? Um, to some degree. There are things you appreciate about it. Yeah. And even when I said the people that use it, I was thinking of people that 
like they make it their job. Like they're they're media influencers or you know martial artists that use it a lot. But even then, like they one could we, make we the have, argument that I fit that description. Yeah, I and, still and, hate social media. Yeah, and and I was gonna say we both have met people that do that for a living, and even they hate the trolls that come in. Yeah. And so there's a lot of it that they that they don't yeah. enjoy. So what we're gonna talk about today is is where social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, Twitter, Twitter. et cetera. You know, we're not going to go, we might talk about some things that seem uh, platform specific, but we're going to talk more generally. Yeah. We're going to talk about where it's been good. We're going to talk about where it's been less good. And my personal prediction and, and you know, this may or may not be news to you on where I think things are heading with social media. I've got a reasonable track record for things like this kind of in the marketing space. I'm not going to say I'm anywhere close to perfect, but I've got a pretty good idea where things mm -hmm. are going to head. When we think about social media, for most people, just by numbers, the first platform lots of people were using was Facebook. Yeah. Well, because that's all there was at the time. Well, we had MySpace before that. And, yeah. and, and by numbers, not by percentages, but by numbers, MySpace was the first really big one. Yeah. But before MySpace, there was Friendster. Yeah. And before Friendster, there were other things, right? There, there, social media has kind of been there in, in some form for a very long time. Yeah. The, the way that, if you remember the early days of Facebook mm -hmm. and what that was with, remember Poke? Oh, yeah. Like the Poke app. And some of you that might be a little younger don't remember the early days of Facebook. What are you talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there, was, there was a function within Facebook where you could poke someone. Yeah. A lot of that is really throwback to something like AOL Instant Messenger mm -hmm. and the way people were using that. Yeah. There was a social component there, mm -hmm. whereas most of those apps now are, are – nobody really uses them. Yeah. But – for things that are kind of similar, it's more a replacement for text messaging, kind of like WhatsApp. You know, that's kind of the way people use WhatsApp, even though it can do a lot more. It's, mm -hmm. for most people, pretty straightforward. But I think the reason Facebook, though, is the first one people think of is even with my MySpace, and, and again, some of these younger audience listening are going to be like, what is MySpace? But MySpace and Friendster and all those didn't have as easy – a tool to communicate with other people. It was, it was way more difficult. And Facebook was really the first one that made it very simple and easy to connect with other people. My, my space was there and my space was getting there, but yeah. what my space allowed you to do that was ultimately their downfall was you could customize the code to your page. Mm. And it, it created circumstances where people were, who didn't know how to write HTML mm -hmm. were, were, bugging it up and it could crash your browser and that happened enough. And there was some, uh, there was no protection from people trying to embed infections in there. And eventually people just started to go, this thing over here is new and shiny and does everything else and doesn't crash. Yeah. And, and then it just kind of started to shift. And in the early days it was great. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember saying, to people who were kind of long holdouts, I feel like I have better quality conversations with people that I'm following on social media when we get together. Because yeah. instead of saying, what have you been up to? I can say, I saw that you did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know more about it. It just felt more engaging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. And for martial arts, we started to see communities forming. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a secret. I don't think very many people will disagree that the internet has been absolutely huge for martial arts because for most of us, we grew up in areas that had a few martial arts schools and many of us existed in these martial arts bubbles yeah. where whether it was discouragement or outright ban of cross training or a misunderstanding of the way other people, it, it doesn't really matter or, why. Or just not knowing or just not knowing that we, we were in these bubbles yep. and martial arts for the 50, 60 years prior to the internet broadly reaching people in the 
mid to late 2000s, mm -hmm. didn't change a lot, didn't yeah. grow a lot. Yeah. I mean, I think, and part of that is just assess accessibility. Yeah. When I was a kid and wanted to learn martial arts, I had to go to the phone book mm -hmm. and I'd look in the yellow pages and look through martial arts schools. Or go to the library and get a book and try to figure out what the yeah, sequence from of a poorly yep. shot black and white photos meant. Or buy a magazine yeah. that in the back you could get videos and DVDs yep. that you had to be sent to you in the mail. Yep. That was it. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, maybe a rare occurrence where you might walk by a school. Yeah, and, and there were seminars, but knowing about them was really difficult. Correct. Yep. Right? And and we, we've had plenty of people on the show who existed in those times, and they talked about, you know, if, if you were, if you wanted to learn, you might almost become a groupie and follow so-and-so to all the seminars you could get to from that person. Yeah. Yeah. Because what else were you going to do? Right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's kind of the early days of the, the positive side of things, but things tend to balance out. There tends to be corrections, and uh, for every person who likes a thing, there tends to be, you know, at least some portion of people who dislike yep, who don't the like thing. It. And I think the, the very first resistance that social media, martial arts social media created was changing those things, changing the kind of the time capsule approach that this is how it's been done. This is how it should always be done. This is what so-and-so wanted yep. us to yep. do. And there were people who tried to really clamp down. And I, I, I don't know that there are people out there who said, you know, my students are not allowed to be on social media because of martial arts they might be exposed to. I'm sure somebody tried that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was probably more, you know, oh, don't join that group. That group's yeah, yeah, full yeah. of... And, and we still see that today. Absolutely. But that push died. That, that effort didn't really work very well, right? We live in a time now where it is accepted, generally accepted, that cross-training is available there is a wealth of information that grossly exceeds what any of us will ever be able to oh, spend yeah. time in. Yep. And that creates some challenges. The fact that no one will ever be able to do everything, master everything, learn, understand, teach everything, means we have to make choices. And it is from those choices that I think social media hijacks us and steers us in certain directions. Hmm. Yeah. The major pro of social media is being exposed to so many interesting ideas, mm -hmm. so many people, so many possibilities. Options. <laughs> the downside is the exact same thing. Yeah. Because how do you make those choices? Mm. Now, if we look at where we are, you know, we're recording this in 2023, end of July, 2023. Most people understand that on social media platforms, there is some manner of algorithm that decides what you should see because there are more things going on than you can physically see, look at, yeah. right? Uh, there are ways to adjust those and, and look at it chronologically, but that most people don't do that. So what do we tend to have? Those algorithms tend to reward one of two things. Things that we already know, like, engage on, mm -hmm. or things that are so far out of that that they make us upset. Right? Remember, these algorithms are not written specifically for martial yeah. arts. And what we tend to have are, I want to see my friends' pictures of their kids and children, mm -hmm. and I want to get really mad about politics. That is how most algorithms end up being curated. Guess what? You're the one training them. Don't, don't shoot the messenger here. I didn't design it this way. <laughs> and it leaves us without a lot of the stuff that most of us would consider substantive. So if we apply that kind of dichotomy, what are we being shown? We're being shown stuff from our martial arts friends, mm -hmm. our martial arts uh, school, competitions they go to, rank promotions, stuff that is positive, warm, fuzzy. But let's face it, you could spend 100 hours looking at it 
and it doesn't do anything for you. It does not advance your understanding. Mm -hmm. It does not um, make you as a martial artist better. Now, if you're a martial arts school, putting out that sort of content is absolutely, absolutely. wonderful. Yeah, that can absolutely because, happen. and and here here's a, a little bit of a behind the scenes. I, I work with a number of martial arts schools, and one of the big things I tell them, I want you to get your logo on photos and post them all the time. And if you do, and you tag people in your school, then the algorithms on most platforms are going to make sure that other people see them. And some of those people might go, oh yeah, I'm interested in training martial arts. And you might pick up a student. Okay. The other side of that dichotomy, the, the, the politics, the stuff that makes you mad, well, how many times have you been shown a post in, I'm sure you're in a bunch of martial arts groups, I am too, yep. a post that somebody puts up that's just, they're just stirring the pot. They're just oh, being yeah. a jerk. There are definitely people out there that do that, for sure. They're just trying to create controversy. Yep, I mean, and there are some that I've seen where one of the rules of the group is, do not post about this, and here's why. And then at least once a month, Someone will post about the thing that they were specifically asked not to post. But it's about. really not about that. It's blah, yeah. blah, blah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so we spend our time our our time looking at the warm, fuzzy stuff that really doesn't advance us. Yep. We spend our energy on the negative divisive stuff, mm -hmm. which leaves a huge amount of material in the middle. In the middle. That we don't really address. Guess what? That's the same stuff that we spend our time on when we're not online. It's the mm -hmm. stuff that if we go to a seminar, if we go to a class, it's the meat. It's the, yeah. real, it's the important stuff. It's the stuff that helps us progress. It's the stuff that is the foundation that allows for the warm fuzzy or gives us the material to argue about. It's also not really sexy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what I was going to say. It was, it's, that's, it's the mundane stuff. If I put up a post in a group about uh, the position and placement of a retracted hand mm -hmm. right you and i might have fun in person kind of nerding out and go okay well i could have my hand up here a yeah, little higher lower yeah. i can have it down here at my hip what if it's down below my hip what if it's in front and on my rib cage what if it's vertical in in those places right like we probably come up with seven or eight different positions yep. for that retracted hand and that might be an interesting conversation but that conversation is not going to be terribly interesting online because it, it misses the physical component that we kind of need to shoehorn in to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, it very well could turn into, well, it, oh, it has to go here because that's what so-and-so said or that's what my instructor said or doing it in this way is wrong and dumb. And why do those comments tend to come up? typically from what I would say, close-minded people, people that are not willing to look outside of their own. I would have said that re until recently. Here's really? It. Okay. Yeah. I, I, because, and, and I forget who said this. This might be a Mike Tyson quote, but I might be wrong. Um, social media has made a lot of people comfortable saying things because they're not going to get punched in the face. Mm. Mm. I don't think that's a Mike Tyson quote. And I know that I'm not getting the quote right. Anyway, but the sentiment, the sentiment stands, yeah, yeah. right? If, if you're a jerk on the street to strangers or to your friends or your family. They're going to call you out on it. There, there, there's a consequence. There, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. What is the consequence of being a jerk online? It's pretty minimal. There's always somebody else you can be a jerk to. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. for people who uh, enjoy or are hardwired into or don't even realize but they are getting something out of acting in that way. Social media exacerbates. It supports yeah, yeah. that. They have an avenue they, to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been part of a group discussion where you've got five, six, 20 people engaging positively, constructively talking about a subject? Maybe it's martial arts. Maybe it's not. And then one person jumps in and they blow the whole thing up. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Not even with anything of, of, intelligence but just mm -hmm. rah, right and that becomes a really strong negative yeah and what have we done to try to correct that if you follow me personally on facebook i'll, I'll post some 
rather interesting questions from time to time, sometimes about martial arts, usually more about life, and all often set rules. It's like, yeah. you can't talk about this, this, or this. this. If you do, yeah. I'm going to delete it. And usually we get pretty far before the conversation dies because somebody pops in or uh, or we limit it with a group, right? Like there's a group and, and I watched a group the other day have a group discussion about kicking someone out of the group. I saw that as well. You know the one I'm talking mm -hmm. about. I do. And I found that really interesting. So we try to set up these barriers to keep that stuff out. But it's actually those count, those opinions that create the controversy, the counter ideas that make it d interesting. And it's really hard to have digital discussion about subjects that are best expressed with physical, physical movements, uh, understanding yeah, yeah, yeah. and not have the counter opinion. And now it just becomes kind of sterile and boring. Mm. Yep. Really, we can summarize this as the, the, the con for martial arts as individuals really comes down to a poor ability to substitute in-person conversation, discussion, and, yeah. and, and training and forth, yeah. into a digital world. Yeah, I have found myself not using much social media for a lot of those reasons, um, except Facebook. Um, and just because I'm old yep. and that's the one that I, you know, that I use a lot. Um, but I also recognize that the benefits of using a lot of social media we talked about was for school owners, people that you know, for PR and marketing and stuff. And that isn't me at this point. Right. So I'm not, I, I'm finding myself not pulling away from and not using TikTok. I never use TikTok, but, you know, step, social media like Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. It, you know, as an aside, and let me speak to this as an individual and as someone who coaches businesses and school owners on this stuff. The, there are different social media platforms for a reason because different people want different things out of social media. Uh, for example, I find TikTok to be the easiest platform to kind of train towards the stuff that I want. It's pretty rare that martial arts stuff goes up on TikTok that I don't see it. I rarely see someone say, oh, uh, I saw this post from so-and-so. I'm like, I know who that is. Yeah. I know who that yeah. is. I saw that post, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I train it. Yeah. Lost my train of thought. There's nothing that requires you to use all of them. You use social media the way you want, mm -hmm. platforms you want, and... They're tools. And, you know, for you, it's a tool of probably staying connected to people. Absolutely. Some entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. You're it's probably it's not... mostly connecting to people. Um, not so much for entertainment, but co staying connected. Sometimes it's staying connected through Messenger and actually chatting yeah. with people. And sometimes it's just like, oh, oh, Michael Johnny did that today. Oh, okay. That's cool. Like just staying connected in that way. And that's kind of where I'm at when I use it personally. It's, you know, mm -hmm. who's doing what that I want to stay up on. And I make heavy use of the hide forever. You know, I don't want to mute, unfollow, whatever it is. Yep. Because I don't need to be subjected to BS that I, I am not interested in or toxicity. But when I use it wearing, you know, the, the, the whistle kick hat, the ambassador hat, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever hats I'm wearing that are not personal, I'm looking at it a little bit differently and I'm trying to create things that make someone who is using it as an individual find something more positive. Oh, from, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm, that, I'm, that try, I'm trying to stand out from the crowd in a way that is positive, that mm -hmm. does support these values that we've spoken so much about on this show, this connect, educate, entertain. I'm always trying to produce content that people want to connect with. Yeah, that stuff that people will find enjoyable. worthwhile. Yeah. Worthwhile. Yeah, and, yeah, and hopefully learn something. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, maybe they're, what they're learning is is my perspective, and it makes them think. Right? I mean, there's, you know, it's all we've ever asked you to do on this show is think about what we're talking about. And that would be my encouragement to school owners too: is that if you're if you're going to put stuff out there. Um, 
don't approach it in a negative way. There are a number of school owners that I've talked to over the years, some that I've consulted with, some that I have not. And, and my, my first rule, and I don't have a lot of rules, but the rule, number one rule is don't be negative. Yeah. Don't be a jerk. I don't believe that politics has a place within training. Mm -hmm. I, I think in fact, the exact opposite. I think bringing people together of different opinions, you know, uh, from the world is a benefit. Yeah, it's and a good your thing. school does better in that way. And I think especially in this time when we are so divided on seemingly everything, everything. yeah, you know, um, if you, you could post a picture, here's the best ridiculous one. I see people actually get worked up about the notion of pineapple on pizza, like legitimately <laughs> get worked up. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a food. You, you don't have to eat it. Uh, I don't like pineapple on pizza. I don't understand why you like it, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. I think and actually I do like pineapple on pizza. It's really good. People like to get worked up. Yeah. Yep. Don't feed that. Feed the other side of them. Yeah. Feed the part of them that is desperate to find positivity in this world and let your school be a place that exemplifies that. Yeah. And I think the thing that many people forget is that, or maybe they don't realize, negativity breeds negativity. Yeah. That it grows and it will become cancerous. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it doesn't have to be. You don't have to be negative. You don't have to be. But there are a couple of things at play here. One, we talked about the social media algorithms. Mm -hmm. They tend to reward that. And then two, we are actually hardwired to respond stronger to those negative things. Mm. There, there's been plenty of, of research on this. And this is why, if you really dig, there are some people of prominence that are involved in social media that do not personally use social media or permit their children to use mm -hmm. social media. It is a tool and you have to recognize that every yeah. tool has an upside and a downside. And the major downside is that social media, the way it is built because of the way we are built is always going to reward negativity. And this is why sadly, there are a number of people out there who have tried to build brands. Yeah. Uh, and, and there are a number of them within the martial arts world. And I'm thinking of some of them right now that their whole brand has been responding to trolls. Mm and growing their following by creatively responding to trolls. Yeah. Guess yep. what happens when they try to pivot out of that? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And this is why if you look at what we've done on social media over the years, I have insisted on us remaining positive and supportive and doing all the things that we stand for. And if you compare our social media numbers to some of these other brands, they're tiny. Yeah. They're, they're, I'm thinking of one out there now. Um, I'm not going to give away anything, but I'm thinking of one now that probably has somewhere between 50 and a hundred times the social media presence we do. Mm. I will guarantee that our financials look better. Guarantee. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Because if, if you follow, if you hate watch or if you watch because it gives you something to hate, mm -hmm. right? Which those are two different sides of things. Do you want to spend money to support that? Yeah, good point. Nobody's out there hate wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, that's true. But we have plenty of people who wear whistle kick stuff because it stands for something that they want to be associated with. Yeah. Right. And this is the difference between cultivating the following and building a brand. Right. Yeah. But if anybody out there does want to hate wear a whistle kick shirt, though, by all means, you can... podcast one five. You might as well save fifteen percent to hate wear. You could set it on fire. You could film it. We still make the money. I don't yep. care. Okay. Where is this headed? That's a good question. So, so you this... said you have an idea as to where it's headed. If you look at technologies over time, most technologies don't get off the ground. Mm -hmm. But some of them get embraced and we believe that they are going to save us from ourselves, that we, we become very immersive. And to give you the, the nerdiest example, because this is where I figured this out, uh, back in the day when people created web pages by handwriting code, because mm -hmm. yes, I am that old. And yes, I did do this. Yep. I wrote my first website in 1994 by hand. Ah, oh, 
where's the closing brace that I'm missing? <laughs> this was also back before you had uh, text editors that were designed for this purpose, but I digress. Frames. If anybody's real, real nerdy and remembers early internet days, that we had frames where you would divide a page into a section. And so clicking on something here might change what's in this yep, section, yep, right? Okay. We've completely gone away from that. But when frames were added to the HTML set, everybody used frames. I remember doing a website where it had like six frames. It was like all this, like getting the math right was annoying. Never would have worked on a phone. <laughs> and then I, as everybody went to frames and then everybody started pulling back from frames. And there were some times where frames were, were used, but it was rare. And it was like, okay, we tried this thing. We figured out, we threw it at everything. Yeah. It works in a few cases, but not very many. We found better ways to accomplish the same things. The pendulum swung out and it swung back to correct. Now, in the case with frames, it didn't swing very far the other way. Yeah. But one of the things I've been telling my clients now, because I see this happening as people become more resistant for whatever reason to social media, I was on actually on a meeting in a meeting with someone yes, yesterday. We talked about they're starting to work with a team. Yeah. Doesn't use Facebook. Just mm -hmm. flat out doesn't use Facebook. We went all digital. Everybody's marketing went digital. Yep. Newspapers died, magazines died, it all died. And now it's starting to come back the other way. What am I telling my clients? I want you to make posters. I want you to put ads in the newspaper. Hmm. I want you to put up signs in front of things. Yeah. Analog, offline, because the pendulum is starting to correct. Now, it will go the other way. It'll keep going. How much we lose on the digital side, I don't know. Yeah, we'll there see. will probably be some consolidation in social media. We'll probably see some platforms die off. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of them out there. In fact, if you, you look, there are probably 30 to 50 social media platforms right now that you could use. You haven't heard of most of them, but they exist. Yep, and there. they have large followings by sheer numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of those will die off because people are only going to want to invest a certain amount of time. Right? The pendulum swings back and forth. It happens in martial arts. We went all the way out on, it's got to work in MMA. It's yeah, got to yeah. work on the street. Yep. And that's been pulling back too. Well, and even within styles, you have swings. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. So that's where, where I believe things are going. I want everyone to understand that this is not a blanket disparagement of social media. This is not us saying you shouldn't use social media. It's also not us saying you should. If you look at social media openly, honestly, as a tool, if it serves you, if you derive more value in using it than in not using it, then use it. Then use it, yeah. Be aware of the pitfalls. Be aware of the fact that it is designed to hijack that primal part of you that makes you respond to big and negative, extreme and unhealthy and argumentative topics. If you're a school or otherwise engaged in martial arts business, recognize that it can be the most economical way to reach people. Yeah. I'm opening a school. It opens probably right about the time this episode is going to post. There are social media pages mm -hmm. and events and things scheduled and I'm paying for ads, but I'm also doing offline things, right? It is an arrow in my quiver, so to speak. No, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Right. You probably want to have more than one arrow. Yep. And you probably, oh, I'm going to make a Hawkeye reference, which kind of kills me. <laughs> the worst Avenger, just by so much. You might have different arrows that accomplish different things. Some of them explode. Some of them don't explode. You might have darts. You might have darts. I dig it. I dig it. And, I'm, and I don't just hate Hawkeye because I'm the better Jeremy than Jeremy Renner. <laughs> anything else no i think we're good right. that was good good thing to have yeah done. yeah I, I appreciate everybody being here thank you if you have additional perspective if you have things that you want to add in if you have questions i mean join the facebook group 
martial arts, sorry, the Facebook page. Yes. We've retired the group. If you go to the group, it, it mentions the page. So by all means, you'll, you'll end up there. Uh, and it's a perfect example. We had to yep. make a change mm -hmm. because Facebook made some changes and things. And so we've shifted from a group to, to a, a page. page. Whereas I know when, when we launched, I think it was just me back then, I did a bunch of research. Should this be group or should this be page? And it made sense to make it a group. Yeah. And now it makes sense to have it a page. Go check that stuff out. Go see the post. Follow us all over on social media if you want to. If you don't, the best way to stay in touch with us is actually our newsletter. And you can sign up for the newsletter either at whistlekick.com or whistlekickmartialartsradio.com where every single episode we've ever done is available. You can tip us or you could create some kind of recurring contribution via Patreon at patreon.com slash whistlekick. My email address is jeremy at whistlekick.com, andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And that is all I think for so. now. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a, a great, great day. day. Yay. Hey. <laughs> I've touched my legs.